Hey everyone, Carl Shu from Greensock here to talk to you about a new lazy render feature that should really increase performance in your apps. Lazy render works around some very processor intensive browser operations that can drastically hinder the speed at which tweens initialize. We found out that whenever you are reading and writing lots of properties on DOM elements, that if you do a read, write, read, write, read, write, um, it really causes things to slow down quite a bit. So to illustrate this, we created a very simple test that loops through 2,000 DOM elements, and it basically just changes the transform of them. So I'm going to run this test, and 2,000 iterations takes two seven, I'm sorry, 7 milliseconds. Do it again, 5 milliseconds. Do it again, 6 milliseconds. Do it again, 6. So inconsequential. The browser can spit this out like nothing, all right? So this is just writing new properties on each one of these pieces of text. Now, if we read the transform settings before we do that right, watch what happens. Nearly five seconds it took just because we're reading values before we're setting them. And just to show you that there's no phony baloney here, um, I'm going to scroll down. And the only way this ch test changes is when I hit that checkbox, we're doing this read beforehand of the WebKit transform. So that's the only change whatsoever to the test. Now, the reason why this is important is because when we're creating lots of tweens, it's often necessary to read the starting value so that we can interpolate between the start and end value. So there is a lot of reading and writing going on when we create thousands or hundreds of tweens. So what we found through this test is that it can make a huge difference if we can batch all the writing after all the reading has been done. So with that in mind, we've created a new feature called Lazy that by default is applied to all the tweens. And basically what Lazy means is that it's going to defer the writing of the values until we've read all the values on that first tick of initializations for all of our tweens. So, this optimization only happens once when each tween is initialized. So let's see what happens when lazy is not enabled. So in an older version of GSAP, if I had 2,000 boxes and ran this test, look what happens. No, I didn't freeze. It actually took five seconds um, to do all that reading and writing. So what's happening is when I run this test, you don't see any animation at all. All these boxes are just jumping to the end. And in our lag smoothing video, I'll explain exactly why GSAP chooses to do that. In short, it's because all those tweens should have already transpired. So when the engine realizes, oh, 6,000 milliseconds took place already between the time the tweens were first initialized and the first render happened, on that first render, the engine says, hey, wait, all these guys should be in their end position. So this can be sort of annoying, I'm sure. Well, by having lazy enabled, which again happens by default, check out what happens to this start time. Run test, 125 milliseconds. That's a pretty big boost right there, huh? So we're very excited about this because now, by default, without you changing any of your code, this optimization happens seamlessly behind the scenes. And of course, you know, there are plenty of other factors that can get in the way of your tweens running smoothly. Maybe this initial startup time is going to be 300 milliseconds because you're tweening 4,000 boxes. Well, with our new lag smoothing method, we're going to show you how you can account for lag that happens when tweens are initialized and even when they're running. So be sure to watch that lag smoothing video, grab the latest version of GSAP, and have fun tweening.